So here is my brand new Android screen installed on my 2015 Audi A4 and it's awesome. It's large, there's a lot of features. I can also access the internet. It's fully touchscreen. It's just overall a better screen than my stock screen. Let me remind you what my old screen looked like. As you can see, it's really small. It's really boring. There's not a lot of features. It has to be controlled with the scroll wheel. It's not even touchscreen. Overall, it just really needs an update. So now let me show you how I upgraded to this Android screen. If you guys remember, a few months ago, I installed an Apple CarPlay Android Auto module to my OEM radio, and it's been amazing, but I want more. And here is the entire Android kit from DMP Car Design. Everything's included to install it on the car. It's plug and play, and it looks awesome. So DMP Car Design, if you go to the website, they carry tons and tons of different screens for many different cars, makes, and models. Uh, they also carry a bunch of cool, unique products, anything from ambient light kits to wireless chargers. Uh, so definitely go check out DMP Car Design if you're interested in any screens or products. But back to the kit. So we have an Android screen, as you can see here. And then right here is a metal bracket holding the screen in place on the car and a plastic bracket covering the metal bracket. And down here is the display harness. Right here is the main wiring harness. Down here is the Wi-Fi receiver, the GPS receiver, and a mini speaker. So now let's go ahead and get this installed. So first step is to remove the radio. I'm going to cover my shift knob just to protect it. But now I'm going to use some radio keys that I got online. And they just stick right into a slot here and here. And it should click right into place. And once it clicks into place, I can pull the radio right out. Next up top, I need to remove the OEM screen. I need to first remove this trim piece using a trim removal tool that I'm just gonna pry up on the trim all the way around just so it doesn't break. And once the trim is fully off the car, I'm just gonna lift it up And then right over here on the right side, I'm going to disconnect the harness going to the emergency light. So to remove the screen, there's four screws holding in place. I'm just going to use a Torx screwdriver and take them all off. Okay, so now that the screen is removed, I can go ahead, flip it around, and remove all the connections. So here is the display harness. This blue connection here is going to plug into the round connection I pulled off the OEM screen. And then this white connection plugs to the back of the screen. I'm gonna have to take this USB and just tuck it through out to the bottom. I'm actually not gonna use this USB cable because there's already one that's part of the main wiring harness in a later step. But I'm just gonna slide everything down, keeping the white connection up top. Next is the GPS receiver. Just gonna peel the backing off. And then I'm going to find a spot for it inside. And then I'm going to tuck all the wires in, leaving the connector hanging out. So next is the Wi-Fi receiver. 
I'm going to do the same exact thing as the GPS receiver, peel the backing, find a place to stick it, and then I'm going to tuck all the wires in, leaving the connector hanging out. Okay, here's the main wiring harness. This white connection plugs to the back of the screen. This and the white connection will need to go through the bottom up to the top. But before I do that, there's a connection right here that I need to plug the mini speaker to. So I'm just gonna plug it together. And then I'm going to route it underneath to the side and out through the top. For the speaker, I'm just going to peel the backing and then mount it on the inside. Okay, so next what we have here is the USB cable and this connector here for the CAN bus. So the USB and the CAN bus will need to go through the side to the glove box. I'm gonna do that next, but first I'm going to do the quad lock connectors right here. So pretty easy to install. I'm gonna first remove the quad lock connector from the OEM radio. I'm just gonna pinch a hinge, pull it up, and it should release right from the back of the radio. And this is a female end, so I'm going to find the male end of the new quad lock. Connect them together. And then the other end can go back to the radio. Okay, the USB and the CAN bus to the glove box. So to remove the glove box, there's a screw right here on the side. There's two screws on the bottom, one here, one here. And when I open up the glove box, there's a bunch of screws on the inside. So once those screws are fully removed, the glove box will actually pull right out. Now I can tuck the CAN bus connector and the USB cable to the glove box area. So in the glove box, this red connector needs to come off. That's the CAN bus. And then this yellow one will take its place. So I'm just going to take it off. And then I'm going to plug the yellow one right into that port. and the red connector will need to plug to the other end of the harness. So now it's fully connected. For the USB cable, I'm just gonna tuck it underneath so it comes out of the footwell on the left side here. And I can go ahead and reinstall the glove box and start working on the radio. So the radio can slide back in and now I can take the metal bracket. I'm going to push all the cables through and then I'm going to screw it down to the car. So here is the OEM trim. Here's the brand new plastic bracket for the screen. So this actually just sits right on top. 
And this is a new cable for the emergency light, the new emergency button. So it goes on like this. So the new connector plugs in right here. And then the other end plugs into the OEM connector on the car. And then I'm going to install these screws here and there should be four from the metal bracket kit. So here is the connector to the new emergency light fully installed. I'm going to slide all the cables through. Next I'm going to install the four screws. Once that's fully secured, I can go ahead and start plugging everything to the screen. And then the last thing is just to tuck in the cables, slide the screen in place, and it should snap right down. And that's it for the install. I've already spoken with DMP Car Design and I fully set up the screen so it's fully customized how I like it. But before I get into the features, I wanna show you how big the screen is using a tape measure. So, it measures about almost 11 inches wide and about five inches tall. And the viewable area is about 10 inches. The screen also sticks out a lot more than the OEM screen. This is so I can easily reach it when I wanna to touch the screen. So just like the Android screen on my Mercedes C300, this screen also has two interface. It has an OEM interface and an Android interface. And when I'm in the OEM interface, everything works just like a normal OEM car. All the control works the same way. So the scroll knob, the steering wheel buttons, everything works exactly the same. Let me show you. Here's the OEM interface. And now it has a speed gauge on the side, which looks pretty cool. But in the OEM interface, I can still use the scroll wheel, just like if it was the old screen. I can put the car in reverse and it'll go into reverse for the camera. And if I control the temperature, you'll also see that pop up on the screen just like OEM. And to get into the Android interface, I just need to tap the screen. So this Android screen, it's super fast and super responsive. I'm not gonna go through all the specs of it, but here's the specs if you wanna take a look at it. Now let me walk you through the major features of this Android screen while in the Android interface. Again, to get into the Android interface, I just need to touch the screen. And here we are, access to all the features. Before I get into the features, this is fully touchscreen, just like a smartphone. And I can still use the volume control on my steering wheel and my center console. So this screen can connect to the internet. I can tether it to my smartphone so that way I can use Wi-Fi or I can connect to a Wi-Fi if I'm parked in my house or I can put in a SIM card and get data that way as well. Uh, some of the features don't require the internet. Some will require the internet. But let me walk you through each of these. So this is kind of a shortcut uh, area right here. I can go music, GPS, phone, setup, and then this car uh, button right here or also car info will bring me back to the OEM screen So here in this main menu we got video this is if I want to watch any video that's already been downloaded onto the screen um, Or I can upload it using a USB stick or a memory card to the USB port uh, Next is music same thing like video anything that's downloaded or music that's been uploaded using the USB port. Phone, I have all access to my phone so I can make phone calls using the screen. 
navigation is GPS. I can set that to Waze. I can set it to Google Maps. Those are going to require an internet access, or I can download an offline map and use it there. Next is phone link. Phone link is if I want to connect it uh, to the phone for CarPlay or Android Auto. This is where I would set everything up, and I can also set it to automatically turn onto Apple CarPlay or Android Auto as soon as the car is turned on. Car info we talked about that takes me back to the OEM interface. Uh, apps, that's just like uh, all my apps. I can have access to the Play Store, uh, a customizable uh, equalizer to really fine tune the audio of the car. I have access to Google Chrome. Um, there's just a lot of different things that I have access to and I can download a lot more just like a tablet. Then settings, that's just to set up the screen, pretty straightforward. And then we have some other things here like DVR. If I have a camera hooked up to the car, I can set it up to do a DVR. Um, I'm not gonna use that. Dashboard's really cool, so when I hit that, it gives this cool gauge. So there's different settings I can do, but it'll, it's basically a secondary gauge for the car. It just looks really cool, especially if you have passengers in the car. You can see the speed and you can see the RPM. And I can change the colors as well if I want it to match my ambient light kit. File manager, just access to different files. I don't really go in there. And then browser, that's if I want to go into Google Chrome and surf the internet, I can do that as well. I can watch YouTube videos, stuff like that. So a few things I forgot to mention was when I'm in the Android interface, when I do put the car in reverse, it will go to the reverse camera and then I'll switch back to the Android interface. So yeah, the screen is really cool. It's super fast, super responsive. It looks really good. And there's just a lot of cool features compared to an OEM screen or an OEM screen with a CarPlay module. This is just light years better than that. So yeah, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. This car really needed the screen and I really wanted the features that are included in this screen. Again, if you want more information on this screen or screens for other cars, go check out DMP Car Design's website. Well, I don't know about you, but I really wanna go for a drive and enjoy my brand new screen.